Hey, one of the best features of Phone Assistant is being able to create complex automation and workflow without needing to code. This is great for people that don't, are not developers. They have pretty much a whole ecosystem to consume. But what if you want to create something custom? Home Assistant allows many, many ways to extend its capabilities. Maybe create new extension, use webhooks for internal event, or you can use something like a message broker. But sometimes we really want deep control. For example, uh, I'm a developer, I'm comfortable just running code, and sometimes all I want to know is, okay, something happened in my house, I want to react to it. And uh, the easiest uh, scenario for me will be to just have somebody say, hey, <laughs> something happened. And thankfully, all assistant uh, by default uh, allow you to do this kind of automation, leveraging the REST API exposed by default or WebSocket. Today, we're gonna see how to use WebSocket. Uh, it's really, really straightforward. Let's get it. Uh, I created the repository that I'm going to link in the description. It's pretty simple. Okay, this is just a Node.js project, but anything you can do uh, speak WebSocket can make it work. Use a npm start, uh, the only dependency that I have to read the environment variables for the token and uh, the dependency just uh, for typing. TSX is a way to run TypeScript files without having to compile it yourself. It's like TS node. Okay, I just import the temp so I can read the environment variables. You can see it's home assistant token. Where do you get a token? It's pretty simple. You can go to your home assistant, um, just create token, create one, and have it. That's it. We compose the URL, create a new web socket. This is just a bunch of utility functions that are gonna be used later on. We set an event handler for every message we receive. If it's an event, like a change state, or I want you to print a couple of things. If we wait for the socket to be open, to be connected to a system instance. Run authenticate, we just sends token, uh, type off, just send it, just sends to the socket, uh, just a stringified payload. Then run subscribe to event. Subscribe to event sends, send us a subscribe events type. Uh, the event type is optional. In this case, uh, it's gonna be subscribe it to all event because we're not uh, specifying. I'm pretty sure you can use also the asterisk, but this work anyway. Thursday's ID is just to um, correlate messages that was sent from your client. It's required, can be any number. There is no problem about conflicts uh, beside you, you not knowing who sent what. That's it, it's really simple actually. We already created an event listener, so for every event we're gonna get notified. MPM start is authenticating. Okay, I have a, a trigger here. As you can see, it's pretty much instant. Uh, and bear in mind, this is not even a tool that is directly controlled by Home Assistant. This is uh, going through the HomeKit integration. So it's pretty crazy how fast it is. Wait a little more, we'll probably get some harder kind of event. Uh, but Oh, you see, okay, sure. now a lot of uh, stuff is happening, like socket uh, and other things. I mean, things that are happening in real time are sent in real time. Other kind of events are sent in batch, usually, like the control of battery and things like that. When you get, uh, when you want to get something real time, this is a completely perfect solution. And once you get the message, you do whatever you want with it. So you can send it to AI for some calculation, send it to a log, a log of some sort. There's many, many, many other ways to deal and read data from Home Assistant, from using the API directly to be extremely dirty and go read the SQLite or uh, other kind of database you set up for it uh, manually. But this is perfect for me. So hope it's useful for someone else and bye.